Hi there everyone and welcome to a new review from Class 47 Peter and today we're going to be looking at something brand new. Today we're having a look at a model made by Hornby as you can obviously tell and there's no prizes for guessing to what the loco is going to be either. It's the SR Southern Region S15 class which we've all been waiting for as it has been one of the eagerly anticipated models. It hasn't been that very long though. It came out it was either November or October it came out, but it hasn't been out that long, to be honest. This is not going to be the first review of this model either, because there are other reviews out there that people have done on them already. <laughs> so I've been beaten to it, basically. There are currently three versions you can get of the S15. There's two BR black liveries. One that has the light crest and the early emblem, which the they do have the different tenders. The early emblem one has a different tender to this. Uh, the well, the BR black one with the light crest and the southern region green one have this style of tender. The early emblem one has a different style of tender. Basically. Um, and they have also announced for the 2016 range several other versions of these. I do believe a southern region black one will be out at some point next year, I should imagine, and a couple of other black livery locomotives as well. Which isn't unexpected, because as soon as Hornby bring out two in like this and announce a few models, they're going to bring them out again in other forms of liveries anyway. Now, this model was a Christmas present, and I've only just now got round to having a look at it. Because all I've done so far is take off the box sleeve and just admire it in all its glory through the plastic casing. So I have been looking forward to this particular model. The southern green one is the one I wanted because personally I think it looks nicer than the black livery. I think the green suits it more in my opinion, but there we go. Okay, so on the back of the box you get the drawing diagram for the model and obviously this is a brief history of the locomotive. They were designed to begin with by Robert Urey and then they were later modified by Richard Maunsell. The, uh, the Southern Region SR15 shared many components from the N15s which were larger than the S15s such as the boiler, the cylinders and the valve gear and also the tender designs as well, they were the same as the N15s. There is only one major difference though between the S15s and the N15s, even though despite the fact they, un they understand that the N15s were a bit bigger. Now the SRS15s to begin with they were designed by a bloke called Robert Urey but later they were modified by Richard Maunsell. The S15 shared many components of the N15s such as the boilers, the cylinders, the valve gear and the tenders of course. The only major difference between the two is the S15s had smaller diameter of the drive wheels which gave them better traction that they were essential for the class because these were essentially used for freight locomotives although they did appear on passenger trains as well. They had a complex build history which spanned several years of construction from 1920 to 1936. The first engines were built for the LSWR hauling freight trains to south coast ports and to Exeter and they also worked on the occasional passenger trains alongside the N15s. In 1923 the CME Richard Maunsell who was then well he was then new to the job basically or fairly new at least increased the strength of the S15s to 45 locos. He also improved the class including the steam circuit and the loading gauge allowing it to run on routes with height and width restrictions. Later locos were built at Eastlay in three batches and they were in service with the southern region until 1966. And seven of these fine locomotives are preserved today. So, they're still with us. Well, seven of them are anyway. Okay, so, British history covered. Let's get cracking with the opening. Now I can see that the battery is quite low, so I may have to at some point go away and have it charged up. 
but either way. Okay, so here we have the instructions, which is the glossy paper style that Hornby seems to be using now, for some reason. Uh, I don't particularly like this sort of paper, but there we go. It is a bit of a niggle, but even so, I just don't particularly like this sort of paper. So this is the instruction manual for the S15, the first and only. So don't plan on getting another, obviously. So it's lubrication, fitting the details, the assembly for the local and tender, close coupling, body removal and DCC ready to fit a DCC decoder and fit in the brake rods. So it's nothing new, we've seen it all before. We're all used to it by now. So I'll just take off the plastic case. Then here we have the detail parts in this bag. So we have drain cocks. Obviously we have a coupling there, a spare one to use in the front of the locker if you want. Steps, brake rods. You do get some vacuum pipes in there as well. Interestingly though, with some of these newer models are bringing out, they seem to have done away with the drawbar chain link couplings that you just had to fit on separately. Hmm, interesting. But then again, they can be a pain to add anyway. So we'll take off the... Well, we'll undo the packaging, I should say, rather. Take away that cellophane sheet. Because we don't need that. And as the locomotive and tender are connected together, you have to lift them both out at the same time. And then we'll just close that back up. Take that to one side and now we can have a look at the model. Okay, now I've just had to charge my camera battery, so it has been a while now, actually. Although to you it's just going to be a matter of minutes <clears throat> but no, it has been a little while but I did say in all fairness I might have to go away and charge the camera battery up and I did it to ensure that it doesn't run out while I'm reviewing in detail this model so that's pretty much why I went away and charged it after I'd unboxed the model but anyway let's get on with the review shall we Okay, so where do we begin in terms of the detail? Well, first of all, this model's very heavy. There's a lot of weight in this, but I spoke about this before, it's important, because without the weight, this model would be useless, and you wouldn't be able to pull any of your owning stock. So that is why, nowadays, you don't see traction tyres on models like this because, well, they're a thing of the past now and the weight does the job anyway to be honest with you it is quite hard to handle this model though with both the tender and the loco connected because of the detail so I am trying not to snap any of that detail But what can we say about the detail? Well, just look at it, it's stunning. And you know something, instantly, when I took the box sleeve off off the, well, box, and looked at the model through the plastic packaging, I knew instantly it was going to be a stunning model. As well as looking at the photographs on the internet of these as well. But anyway, so detail, what do we have? There's that name socket at the front to put the coupling in if you wanted to. You've got this detail on the front of the bogey, which is nice. Metal buffers that are sprung, so if you like sprung buffers, then, well, for you, you're going to be really happy. But I don't really much care for them, so, hmm. But they're there anyway. You've got that hook at the front. The locomotive's running number, printed on the buffer beam, which is number 824. And there's a few rivets on the buffer beam as well. Separately fitted lamp irons and a bright pipe. 
that's already fitted. There's some rivets as well on the running board. Just look at that. Okay, there aren't really any rivets on this side of the running board, but at the front, there's plenty. <laughs> You've also got the smoke deflectors as well with rivets on them. And this bit of detail at the top there, which looks very nice. You also got a lamp iron at the front of the smoke box door and a separately fitted metal handrail and a few other lamp irons. The smoke box door itself does not open but it doesn't really need to to make it a stunning model. Not much more stunning than it already is. You've also got A printed on the running plate. I do believe A is the power classification. There's lining on the running plate as well. Lining on the cylinders and there's a couple of rivets on it as well which is very nice just look at that valve gear and the link motion and the side rods I can't wait to see all that moving because that just looks stunning the wheels are green as well like they should be just like the bodywork is there's some pipe in there under the cab cab steps as well that's also got rivets on them then you've got this pipe work there at the side of the boiler and that reversing lever there's pipe work there that sticks in the top of the cab and comes round down to the boiler which is that pipe work there glazing in the front cab windows like we want to and there should be there's even some rivets on the cab as well just look at that and separately fine handrails that go down the side of the cab and that there is the it's a works plate of some sort with the locomotive's running number on it the livery is spot on They've got the shade of green correct and the lining that goes around the boiler, around the cab and the tender sides and the cylinders and the running plate. Really does look nice. You've also got some rivets on top of the smoke box there and a nice chimney, which you could fit a smoke generator unit in if you wanted to, but it's not my thing, so I'm not going to bother. You've also got fire metal handrails down the side of the boiler, which is what we would expect. Separately fitted metal whistle and safety valves obviously the cab roof is bland so there's not much interesting to look at it but there's the cab interior itself the inside of the cab is painted cream and just look at all that detail the pipe work, the regulator the brakes, the gauges, the dials virtually everything in there is painted even the fire whole door painted silver which looks very nice then you've got the foot plate there as well of course and the tender buffer beam which does have a few rivets on and the tender buffer beam as well the front one there's also some steps on the tender as well with rivets on them which is very nice the face plate of the tender there's rivets there and the handle there to transfer the water from the tender to the boiler Separately fitted handrails on the tender, of course, as you'd want. As you can see, this is the type of tender that has these bogey wheels on, accurate to the real thing, with this particular style of tender. And there's rivets on the wheels, on the bogies, axle boxes and springs, and they are, of course, freely able to turn like we'd want. Then there's the NEM coupling, which is the dolphin tail connector. There's a brake pipe already fitted on the back, like the front one. Metal sprung buffers, because the front ones were. Lamp irons on the back of the tender. Lining on the back with the locomotive's running number. There's a lamp iron on top of the tender. Do be careful, that's fragile. Again, livery application is spot on on the tender. And the style of lettering and numbering is accurate. And looks very nice. On top of the tender you've got rivets and the water filler caps that don't open, but they don't need to. And then there's the coal. I mean, on this part of the tender as well, you can see that there's rivets there as well. And the coal, I think it might be removable. It's bound to be. Because that's what we expect nowadays, and it's what you get a lot now anyway. With models like this. So I just grabbed my needle that I use to lift the coal out of the tender.
I would be very surprised if the coal was not removable, but I am 100% certain that it is. So I'm just cleaning all the muck off the noodle. Okay. So, let's get this removed. Yeah, look at that. I knew it was going to be removable. Took only a couple of seconds to. Oh, where's that come from? That little bit of detail come off. Um, I don't know where that... Ah, uh, yes, I can see where it's come off. That's so going to have to be glued back on. So I'm guessing it's going to have to be glued on like that. But yeah, that's a bit of a shame that that happened, but it can be glued back on, but... Even so... Hmm. It's not the first time I've encountered that, though. It's happened with the Grange. The Hornby GWR Grange. But the coal is removable, but I don't think I'm going to bother putting it back in. I might as well stick the real coal in, in a while. But it's a good thing that the coal is removable. Because that's what we like, and it means you can put real stuff in. I'm not too sure though why the manufacturers have to make the coal load so that the little bit in the chute is removable as well, it's attached to the coal in the tender. Because that means the glue will run out of that gap that's now there that was filled in by that plastic coal, and it will run all over the model. So I'm going to have to cut that bit off and glue it in. And what I mean by cutting that bit off, I'm referring to that bit there on the coal load. But there's no way I'm going to put this back in anyway. Not for the sake of this review. Because it's going to have real coal put in it anyway. Just a shame that one bit of detail came off when I took the coal load out, but... Ah well, it can be fixed. Also I have noticed that there's rivets inside the tender there as well when you take the coal load out. Just look at that. However, you're not going to notice them anyway, to be honest. With the plastic coal load in there, and once you get real coal in the tender, you're not going to notice it anyway. You're only going to notice it if the coal load is removed. And it's going to be very unrealistic to run your model around the layout with no coal in the tender. But there we go. So now we'll look around at the other side of the loco. Okay, well the side this side of the tent, it was the same as the other side. And well, this side is pretty much the same anyway. Although you do not have the reversing lever on this side. You do have some more pipe work there coming down the side of the boiler. More rivets on the cab and another well another fine metal handrail that runs down the side of the boiler and some more pipe work there and you can see a bit of the link motion there come up on the running board just like the real thing and of course you've got another smoke deflector obviously but that's pretty much basically it in terms of detail oh no wait hang on a sec more pipe work under the cab and there's even rivets on the locomotive chassis as you can see, you can see just there. Obviously, there is some more, but my giant thumb is blocking it. As you can see, there we are. There's some more. So, overall, this is a stunning model. So, I think all we've got to do now is to get that real coal load in the tender, and then we can put it on the track and see how this. Butte runs. I might also use this time as well to fit some of these details on. Okay, so we're here at the layout and we're going to put the S15 onto the track. Now we should point out that I have 
fitted the details on look I've said as well as put the coal in the tender however the glue is still a bit wet so you will have to excuse that because it is cold out here if it was warmer it well it would have dried by now because it has actually been well several hours have gone by now since I even put the like on the track and that is because I was gluing the details on but waiting for the glue to set so they wouldn't snap off and have to glue them off again and also I was busy with other things but even so okay so the power's already on so let's get a move in. look at that nice and smooth just how we want it And that is the first time she's actually been wrapped. How slow can she go? Okay, a little bit jerky going slow. But you know, it could be a lot worse than that. And besides, in all fairness, the locomotives in reality don't really go that slow anyway on pulling trains. And to be fair, the track also could be a bit dirty as well, it might need a bit of a clean. But anyway, let's get a running around the layout, shall we? Okay, well I will use this time to point out that I have a trouble with this locomotive derailing around this bend here with the front bogey. That problem is now sorted. But that is really smooth running. There's no grinding noises from the motor. No hiccups as they call it. Well, the locomotive has that stuttering movement. Let's get a zoom in shot of the link motion valve gear. Yes, look at that. Well, the locomotive actually did derail on it, re-railed itself back on the track. I think also what might be the issue is, or might have been, are those detail parts, the steps and the drain cocks at the front. I mean, I do think it's time now that the manufacturers actually start to glue in them on themselves rather than getting us to do it. Because, you know, as, as fun as it might be, it can be a bit annoying when they, if they come off and they have to glue them back on again. Sometimes they're a bit fiddly to put on. And also, it's finding the time to glue them on as well. Okay, so there she comes, at the tunnel. Passing the mineral wagons, the signal backs, and... Now, this was going to be the original next review, following from the review of the Class 101 from Batman over there. However, after recording the review, I forgot to take the footage off the camera, and so I deleted the footage, not realising that I hadn't taken the footage off the camera, because I'd forgotten. So, yes, um, I otherwise I would have gone and re-recorded the review of it but I don't think it's worth it to be honest. I mean I have to be fair reviewed the Helgen 47 on in two other reviews in the past. So I think this time I'll let that one slip the nest. But you will see that in upcoming other videos. Another thing I should point out with the S15 is that I also had more trouble with it derailing. The drive wheels about round there. I've just took a nail out the track 
and all seems fine. So I don't know what's going on there. I honestly don't know if it is actually the detail parts that have glued on causing the problem or if it's to do with the track. I will have to nail it back in and see what difference that makes. But yeah, mm, you know, that sort of thing shouldn't be happening really. And likewise, I don't see why these manufacturers can't, at the end of the day, just do these details in themselves instead of getting us to do it. It can be fun, but it can be a bit of a pain in the backside. And if it's the detailing that is causing this problem, then that is pretty much one of them cases. But anyway, enough of that said. I think what we all do now is get some close-ups of it running around the layout and then we shall get it coupled up to a train and then well the rest of the review will go on from there basically and then we'll come to the conclusion Okay, so we're now going to get the S15 pulling the rake of mineral wagons. Now off camera I have already run it around the layout and she can cope with these. This rake is no problem to her at all. As I shall demonstrate to you now on camera. See, look at that. Oh yes, by the way, and I have figured out to the source of the deraining problem. It is the cause of the front step. So that is something to watch out for, folks, when gluing them on. I just thought I'd point that out to you. Because I actually discovered that off camera. Because one of the steps actually fell off. And when I glued it back on again, I would then discover that it was actually the step causing the problem and, well, not the track. So it first started to de well, it derailed it around here to be honest. Although I will say this, the track was the cause of when the driving wheel was derailed, which was around here. But the problems have been sorted out now, but that is something to watch out for when or if you buy this model or even if you already have it. So the only way out of that is really to have the steps loosely glued which does make them stick out a bit like that as you can see, just about, or not having them on at all. But you know that's just one of them things to put up for. Sorry to put up with. Well, on camera it's not really too noticeable anyway.
we know, probably wouldn't recommend poly cement glue for gluing them on. So in future, I thought, put stuff like that I might consider using some other glue that's probably not as strong as poly cement. Well, I don't know. But she's running okay now. And I have to say, it makes a very nice train all in this rack of mineral wagons. Well, let's do one more go around the layout to give it one more lap or loop, whatever. Then we'll get some close-ups of it and then we'll well, we'll draw up the conclusion from there. Before we do, let's get a, another zoom in shot of the link motion of Valkyrie. Look at that. On camera, it's a little bit harder, of course, and the model is going a bit faster. Okay, so we'll get some close up shots of it now, I think. So in conclusion then, well, other than the cab steps for the front of the locomotive, which do do have a locomotive failure on corners, which you have to watch out for, loosely gluing or not having them is the only way around that problem, but that's really my only criticism. It's not going to be something that's going to be marked down, because it's only one tiny little thing at the end of the day, but it's still something to watch out for. To those of you that already have this model, or, or maybe even be planning on getting it. Also, don't ask me why the camera lens is slightly steamed up, I've got no idea. Also, this locomotive is quite the puller. She's been able to pull this rack of mineral wagons without any problems. It's almost as if the. Oh, excuse the tripod there. It's almost as if these wagons aren't there. But it's getting harder to draw up a conclusion. Really. Because with all these stunning models that are hitting the shelves. <laughs> so that pretty much brings an end to this review. Hope you've all enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. This is a model that is definitely worth buying. You should get one. <laughs>